Hyattsville at Small Farm Innovations. We got a T723 here with the big bore Perkins in it. Uh, he has his steering cylinder seals leaking. And you can see the seal poking out right there. So I'm going to go through the process of removing this cylinder and rebuilding it. Now, looking at his tie rod ends here, I just wanted to show you something. Uh, that there has not seen grease in a while. But I also wanted to tell you that for you out there that see these rubbers tear up, what you want to do is go to your favorite department store, whatever, like a, I'm not promoting Walmart, but something like that where you can get a cheap bicycle inner tube and wrap this with your with a bicycle inner tube and then uh, put some hose clamps on it and that'll keep that protected. You may inject some grease in there. But that's a whole lot cheaper because you gotta buy this whole thing to get this rubber from TYM. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to show you is the uh, getting the, the tie rod out of this housing here. So what I did, I took a 22 millimeter socket and I loosened this nut to where it's flush. And what I'll do, I'll put me a hydraulic jack here. And I'll jack up on this, this nut where it's flush so I don't damage the nut or the threads. I'll jack this up and then what I'll do, I'll tap right here with a hammer right here with a hammer and that will jar that loose now some of you can use a thing called a pickle fork which is this device here and you stick it into here excuse me and you hit it with a hammer the reason why I'm not using this because I don't want to damage this rubber here any more than it is now, I wanted to show you you have to break this knuckle loose here from the hydraulic cylinder. So I have a good 20 inch Williams Crescent wrench on this side. And I have a low budget, cheap China made Crescent wrench on this side. These are right hand thread. So if you see little notches, if you're working on a different tractor like uh, deer somebody one of these is going to be left hand thread like New Holland but if you see any little lines horizontal lines that's going to be a left hand thread in most cases so I want to make sure that one of these is broke loose so I can get it apart and that will allow me to get the piston out on the bench and if I have to I'll put it in a vise or a holding device to get the other knuckle off these are going to be tough sometimes if it's been on a tractor a long time. I don't recommend heating. Uh, if, if you're at the point where you cannot get the knuckles off, then take your cylinder to a hydraulic shop. Okay, now what I did, I have an inch and a sixteenth wrench or a 27 millimeter. I unscrewed this knuckle here from this side using my crescent wrench and I just unscrewed this here until I had enough clearance to get my wrench on the flat of this cylinder rod. You can see here there's uh, some flats there. Let me get the flashlight back up here. So you can see the flats there. So the wrench, once I had enough clearance just stick it in there and then break the other side loose. Remember, it's right hand thread, not left hand. Some of them are left hand thread. As far as I know, on a TYM, they're not. But on your other models out there, other makes, one side may be left hand thread. Okay, now I'm getting ready to take the lines off. I'm going to grab a 22 millimeter wrench. 
I just wanted you to see that I marked the line. I put an R on it for right, and I put an R here, so I won't get uh, anything mixed up. Now I'm going to take a 17 millimeter socket in my impact and take these four bolts out. There's two on each side, and remove the steering cylinder. Okay, I got the cylinder out on the bench. Be careful when you move that rod, you may get a blast of oil in your face. I wanted to let you know that um, when you take the bolts out to remove the hydraulic cylinder, there's this dowel rod here. So you're gonna have to get a screwdriver and pry that off. It ain't just gonna fall out. So you'll have to work it off, but get you a good big screwdriver and pry this off and you can get your cylinder out. All right, I got my cylinder on the bench cleaned up getting ready to take it apart I went ahead just for giggles mark me a line here and put the R on the cylinder and R on the block so it, nothing gets changed around there's no confusion uh, you don't have to do this but I did um, I wanted to talk to you about troubleshooting let's say the reason why this cylinder is getting repaired is because of the external leak you can see the seal poking out there but say for instance you're turning the steering wheel on your tractor and nothing happens you just keep turning the steering wheel so what you want to do is turn your steering wheel to the right and then what you do is take the right hose off get it completely out of the way and then have someone turn the right turn the cylinder or the steering wheel to the right it'll want to make this rod move to the right so you have a piston in here and if it leaks past the piston it will come out this this uh, fitting here so what you do is put a new piston ring in so once again take the right hose off get it completely away from the cylinder have someone turn the steering wheel to the right and if oil comes out of this cylinder without this thing moving, this is not shouldn't move. If it doesn't move and oil comes out, the piston ring is shot. All right, now I have my components cleaned and on the bench ready for inspection. First thing I'm gonna do is grab my cylinder and I wanna make sure it's clean. And there's no scratches or anything like that in there. So on your you guys with 474 574 maybe the 474 I haven't seen it on the 474 but what happens with the 494 and the 574 is that people will get a big grapple and they'll put way too much on the front end and what they'll do they'll start turning with a heavy load on the front this rod will bow because it can't handle the load and it starts taking meat out of the cylinder and what happens you have a ruined cylinder so that's like I don't know 1700 bucks so you want to make sure that you don't overload your steering on your 474 494 piston looks good I'm looking at the rider bores the rider bearings in here that's that's this bearing right here. I wanna make sure they're smooth and in good condition. There's the seal blown out. These nuts are 13 millimeter and they are very, very tight. Had to get my little impact out to get those off. So, but anyway, all the components look good. I don't need anything but seals. Now then, I'm going over here to my tie rod ends. This tie rod here is, you can see it moving. It's no good. I'm going to replace it. The knuckle also has some axial movement. So I'm going to replace it. Now it's not bad. I could probably live with that. But he's using the loader to um, move round bales. And that's going to be a problem. The left side is worse than the right. But I'm having lots of ax er, up and down movement. So... The tie rod ends, the knuckles are bad. Now, you're not gonna get a seal kit from TYM. They're just gonna sell you a whole cylinder. So, 
stay tuned on this video I'll have uh, a seal kit for you and show you the installation now a lot after I'm gonna say five maybe ten years hydraulic cylinders even on your loader your steering cylinder the seals will have to be replaced now what happened here this seal come out now he may he may have been in an overloaded situation I don't know but what happened this seal come out and it allows dirt to come in this first seal here that you see here is a wiper the other seal is your pressure seal that's what holds the the pressure back keeps it contained inside the, the cylinder or actuator so once these fail usually the dirt goes on in with the rod and rips out the cylinder just starts eroding it away now this rod here once again looks good I don't have any pits I don't have any gouges or scratches those scratches will allow a leak so we want to avoid if you have a bad rod you're not going to get a new rod you may be able to get some machine shop build you one but TYM is going to sell you the whole cylinder they do not have this steering cylinder broken down into components I don't know if they are in the future I hope so okay I've, I'm removing the seals I've got one the right side out now I'm getting ready to pull the left I just use two small screwdrivers and what I'll do I'll get it started and I'll use the other one to hold it and then I'll just keep working it out pretty easy okay we got everything cleaned up I got my seals I want to talk to you about the seals here you can see the dirt seal which is this um, this is what fails first these usually wear out and then it allows dirt to go on inside the cylinder that's for every cylinder like on your front end loader or steering cylinders whatever you're using out there that has a hydraulic cylinder this is your u-cup and this is your seal that holds back the pressure when you insert these in the groove down inside of here you want the pressure the lip facing you basically the pressure goes against this lip and spreads it against the rod and the head that's what I call it my nomenclature may not be correct but it's what I've been using the last 40 plus years don't forget this o-ring that goes inside of this head here now this in here is all ready to go I know I have my seal in right because I can put my finger in here and I can pull back and I can kind of feel the the edge of that seal I got my o-ring in everything's ready to go for this head and then I'll insert my seals here shortly All right, now my piston you can see my old seal here and the new these are the backup rings and I want you to be aware you can keep these but there's a tiny lip there and that lip goes over the edge of the seal and it'll go inside of here like that I'll put it together for you and then we'll go come back but I wanted to let you know that when we fitted this seal it's slightly larger in diameter than this so I took approximately 35 thousandths out of this groove I have an old lathe and that worked fine but if you have somebody with a lathe have them take approximately 30 to 35 thousandths out of this groove and it will fit into the cylinder the way we want now once I get this ring on this piston what I'm going to do I have to stretch it to get over this piston here so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a hose clamp and I'm going to put around this and let it sit for about 20 minutes and uh, let this get co uh, uh, compressed down to make it fit easier into the cylinder and once you do that the pressure of the oil will expand this and it'll go out against the cylinder wall now you can see I have my piston or my rings in and I have my backup rings remember the lip goes towards the inside towards the, the seal itself now what I'll do next if you can use a hose clamp or a small engine ring compressor I'm going to compress this down so I can get it in this cylinder 
a lot easier and I'm going to let it sit there for about 20 minutes while I'm doing that I'm going to insert the seals into my head okay you can see I put my hose clamp on here to let this shrink down I've got my seals in then here shortly I'm going to uh, uh, assemble this put this piston rod in here and then put my heads on Uh, also, I didn't do that on this because it looks pretty good, but if you want to go above and beyond, get you some 240 grit sandpaper and scuff this rod, put a little bit of a cross hatch on it. Uh, it takes a while to do that. You may want to watch your favorite YouTube channel like Small Farm Innovations or watch Tony Lay of Tony's Tractor Adventure he's always doing something amazing so he would be fun to watch but while you're watching sand the rod and get it all polished up and, and knock the glaze off that creates uh, a, like a cross hatch pattern which is a labyrinth type seal and it works great but uh, we're going to be sticking this in and I'll be back okay you can see that I got my piston in I got the left head on and getting ready to put my right. I lubricated this. I have everything lined up. As you know, I marked everything when I took it apart. Now, everything is together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my air pressure, air, shop air. And basically, I'm just gonna blow into one end and it'll, it'll move. It's gonna come, it's gonna go the opposite way. So what I'm doing, I'll, I'll go ahead and pressure it up and then I will see if air leaks out the other side. And I'll be careful with this. Slowly make uh, actions and keep your body away from the cylinder. But that's how I do a bench test. So anyway, just be careful. It will move and move fast, but you wanna check to make sure it's not leaking out the other end or out the outside of the seals. You don't have to do this. I just do it to make sure that when I go on with, with it, I won't have any other problems. Okay, I have my tie rod ends out, and what I'm going to do, I have my right and my left side. I got my new parts up here and here. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the best I can on measuring, but I'm just going to count the threads. But I'm going to do my best to measure from this point to the middle of this point here. So I have the same distance that will get me close when I do the alignment, if I have to do the alignment. And then I'm going to mark right and then left and then I know what to put in. I'm also going to test or trial fit these uh, uh, knuckles into the cylinder to make sure there's no problems with the threads or anything like that. Then when everything is good, I'll clean up, clean them up good, make sure the paint's off and then I'll hit them with anti-seize so I can get them off easier next time if I have to do this. Okay, you can see now I mounted up my cylinder. Everything looks good. I made sure the grease fittings here are pointed towards the front to give them easy access. Uh, these are basically right and left hand. These are different part numbers. When you order tie rod ends, make sure that TYM doesn't have a part number for this. So have your dealer call for this because the new books don't show this. It'll show it. But there's no part number for it and when you ask for a tie rod in which is this it, this whole assembly you only get this so tym hasn't got that perfected yet but they will so what i did once i got it mounted i did not put these in i started it up and rotated the steering wheel to get all the air out and cycle it and then i mounted my tie rod ends i lined uh, lined the front axle where it's straight, both of them, no toe in or nothing. That's what the book calls for, or a five millimeter toe in, so that ain't much. So anyway, I just measured across, tape measure and got it straight, and we're good to go. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it informative. Uh, if you want us to send you a kit, give us a call or drop us an email and we'll get you a kit on the way. If you want us to rebuild your cylinder, just put it in a box and ship it to us and we'll ship it back to you. Uh, we also do uh, loader cylinders too, and I know this one here, 
leaked down over the weekend, so I know his uh, tick tilt cylinders are going to need rebuilding pretty soon. Call us at Small Farm Innovations, and um, also uh, subscribe when you can. Thanks.